This took place about 10 years ago with me and my friends on the night of my 14th birthday party sleepover, but I still can't forget it. So my parents had a garage on our property that they had partly renovated. It had walls and a bathroom, but still had the garage door that rolled up, which wasn't completely sealed. There weren't any curtains on the windows. Remember this detail as it will be important later. They let us use the garage when we had friends over to hang out. Our property wasn't totally isolated, but the nearest neighbor was nearly two miles away. But we never really had any problems on our street, and it was the kind of place where you didn't need to lock your doors. So, the day of my birthday party comes. But up until this point, my parents had let my brother stay in the garage, and I wasn't allowed to have friends sleep there overnight yet. Being the very mature 14-year-old girls we thought we were, I begged my parents to let us have the sleepover in the garage, even though my mom was unsure, but my dad agreed since it was my birthday. After a long day filled with sugar and driving my parents crazy, we finally got ready for the sleepover in the garage, but we had strict instructions to go to bed and turn off the lights by 11 p.m. And it was my responsibility to make sure the garage roller door was locked from the inside. I made sure to lock the door and we settled in for a night of more sugar and TV. At 11 p.m., we turned off the lights, but couldn't sleep. So we decided to play hide and seek with the lights off, like teenagers do. We were about three rounds in, and my best friend was it. I was hiding half behind a cupboard next to the roller door. Everyone was giggling when the first person got caught. Then, I heard giggling coming from behind me. At first I thought it was an echo, because there was no way someone could have found a hiding place behind me, with me up against the wall and door. The second person was caught, and there was more giggling from behind me. Now I was freaking out, but I didn't want to ruin the game, so I quietly moved to a different spot facing one of the windows. It was pretty dark outside, but the moon was bright enough to see shadows. Inside the garage, it was completely dark. I was trying not to get found when I saw a shadow pass by the window and stop. Now I was sure someone was outside, but I thought it might be my dad or my oldest brother checking if we were in bed. So I froze. My best friend ran straight into me and started laughing. I quickly shushed her and said, My dad's outside. We need to get back into bed. We quickly grabbed the other girls and quietly got back into our beds, thinking we had avoided getting into trouble when we didn't hear my dad saying anything. I turned over in my bed, but the shadow was still there. By this time, I was really freaking out. The shadow moved away. Then there was scratching on the garage door. This time, the other girls noticed. We all started quietly panicking and got into my bed, hoping whatever it was would go away, or that we were just imagining things because of the sugar. Then the knocking on the door started, along with more giggling. We were freaking out, but didn't scream. I had just gotten a phone for my birthday, but it was still in the house with the other presents. With no way to quietly call my parents, we yelled at whoever was outside to go away. Then there was more giggling and banging on the windows. Now the shadow was pretty big, so it must have been a grown man or a big teenager. We threw a mattress from one of the beds against the window so they couldn't see us. Then the person went to another window. We decided to hide in the bathroom, leaving the door partly open so I could see out. The garage door started to rattle and bang like someone was trying to force it open. The giggling never stopped. I gave up and let out the loudest scream I've ever made. The noise at the garage door stopped. We sneaked out and saw the lights on at the house, and my dad running towards us. At the same time, a car started up and drove away from the side of the road. We didn't get a chance to see what the car was, 
before my dad opened the door with the key. He found us five hysterical girls and took us to the house. My mom calmed us down and let us all sleep together in their room on the king-size bed, which helped us finally get to sleep. Any sleepovers had to be in the house, and my friends and I were so scared that we all slept with the lights on for the next few nights. Let's just say, it was another two years before I could sleep in that garage again. When I was in sixth grade, I had a small group of close friends. There were four of us, and we were all girls. So we often had sleepovers and took turns staying at each other's houses. Now our parents all knew each other, and we lived close by, with the farthest house being only 10 minutes away. One sleepover, we were at my friend Caitlin's house, and her two cousins were also there. Caitlin had two older sisters and an older brother. They were all very nice and friendly. During our sleepovers, they usually stayed in their rooms and only came out for food, so we never felt like we were bothering them. Her brother would let us play with his PS2 sometimes, and her sisters would talk to us about boys and high school gossip, which we thought was really cool. Caitlin had a great relationship with her siblings, but it was different with her cousins. One cousin was in eighth grade and was closer in age to Caitlin's older sister, who was a freshman in high school, so she stayed in her room. The other cousin was a boy who was a junior in high school. The girl was nice, but a bit shy. The boy, however, gave me the creeps. He was more outgoing, but something about his behavior was strange. When he smiled, it seemed like he was smiling at something in his head, not at you. He had shoulder-length stringy and greasy, dirty blonde hair. He was very skinny for his age. Later when we were in Caitlin's room, she told us that she had just recently met her cousins as their moms had a fight and didn't talk to each other for a few years. They recently reconnected, so they thought it would be a good idea for Caitlin's aunt and her children to visit for the weekend. Caitlin said her girl cousin was nice, but thought the boy was weird. And since he arrived, he tried to hang out with her instead of her brother. He would go into her room and look through her toys and books to try to talk to her. He was also kind of touchy. He would pet her cheeks and hair. When she flinched or moved away, he would get a cold look in his eyes and stare at her for a few seconds before smiling that creepy smile. We all agreed it was really weird, but then we moved on and talked about the usual things sixth graders talk about. We watched a movie before bed and took turns using the bathroom in the hallway that Caitlin shared with one of her sisters. The oldest sister had her own bathroom to brush our teeth. Everyone called dibs on their turn, and since I didn't mind, I was the last one to go. When my friend Lucia came back and told me she was done, I was relieved because I was getting tired and just wanted to brush my teeth, lay in bed, and gossip until we all fell asleep. I walked down the hallway and opened the bathroom door. I was so distracted that I didn't see Caitlin's cousin in there until I turned on the lights. I quickly apologized and closed the door. At that moment, I wanted to run back to the room. He was in the bathroom with the lights off. From what I saw before I shut the door, he was just sitting on the closed toilet. Before I could leave, he opened the door, smiled at me, and told me to go ahead. I didn't really care about brushing my teeth at that point, but I didn't want to run away and make him react. This is when things got really creepy for me. I opened the door, and he was still there, waiting with a smile on his face. He said, let me walk you back to your room. I didn't know what to say, but he took my silence as a yes. Before I knew it, he grabbed my right hand 
and walk with me back to Caitlin's room. His hands were really warm and sweaty, even though he didn't seem sweaty or warm. I felt so numb, and I could hear my own breathing. I honestly felt like I might pass out. When we finally reached the room, he let go of my hand and said goodnight, then went back to the room he was staying in, which we passed on the way to Caitlin's room. I went back inside, and I guess I looked upset, because my friends came over and asked what was wrong. I told them what happened, and they all agreed it was really weird. Caitlin said she would talk to her mom in the morning. I hoped that would be the end of it, but it wasn't. Now we weren't allowed to lock doors during sleepovers, and it's usually fine, but not this time. I must have been asleep for a few hours when Caitlin started shaking me to wake me up. She had been awake for a while, and since I was closest to her, I was the first one she came to. She told me with a shaking voice that her cousin had opened the door to the room twice that she knew of and stared in for almost a minute before quietly closing the door. I was really scared when I heard this. He was just watching us sleep through the night. I agreed to climb into Caitlin's bed with her, and we waited. It didn't take long before we heard the door open. We both froze and stared at the door. There was no light in the hallway, and the only light in the room was from the moon outside but we could still see a silhouette of someone's head peeking through the door. We could feel his eyes on us, and he stared into the darkness of Caitlin's room for a few seconds. We tried not to move so he wouldn't know we were awake, but it didn't help. He let out a small sigh like he was trying not to laugh. Hey, Caitlin, he whispered, and then just closed the door. Caitlin looked like she wanted to cry, she held on to me, and we just hugged each other and waited to see if he would come back. He never did come back. I guess he knew we were awake, so he didn't bother. We couldn't go back to sleep that night. The next morning, my mom came to pick me up early, and I said my goodbyes. I was glad Caitlin's cousin was still asleep. When I saw Caitlin at school, I asked her what happened after I left. She said she told her mom, and her mom was very worried, and said she would talk to their aunt. I guess Caitlin's mom also told my mom about what happened, as my mom asked me about it later and wanted to know if anything else happened to me. After that, my mom made sure Caitlin's cousins weren't around, before letting me sleep over at their place again but fortunately she didn't need to worry, as they never came to visit after that. I don't know if Caitlin's mom had another fight with her sister, or if she just didn't invite them back, but I hope we never see Caitlin's creepy cousin again. I'm a woman in my early 20s, and I had a really creepy experience that still freaks me out when I talk about it. Now normally, I stay over at my boyfriend's place, but my parents were out of town, so I had to stay at their house to take care of the dogs. My brother was also away, and there was no one else to watch them. There are three little dogs who can't be alone for obvious reasons. Now I felt pretty okay staying alone at my house, even though it was a bit strange without anyone else around. Plus, I live right behind them in my two-story house with my grandmother. But she was also out of town, working as a truck driver, so I was completely on my own. Around 7 p.m. that night, I took the dogs out to the backyard so they could go potty. I let them run around for a while since they're usually inside dogs and spend most of their time cooped up in the house. But these dogs, I swear, bark at everyone. I'm always telling them to be quiet, but they didn't listen. When the dogs started running and barking at the dark hallway on the side of the house, where there's a back gate that leads to the alleyway, I got up from my seat to see what they were barking at, but I didn't see anyone. 
I was hoping there was nothing there, and I felt a bit relieved. Feeling a bit scared, I called the dogs to the back door of my mom's house and let everyone inside, then locked the door. Looking back, I didn't really think much about what they were barking at. Then, an hour later, my brother came home from his trip with his girlfriend. So it was time for me to head back to my place. Since I live in the house right behind, it was just a quick walk over there. I was glad to have some time to myself before I had to go back the next day to take care of the dogs. I went into my house, went to my room, and started watching some scary videos with all the lights off. It was 11 p.m. when my other sibling came home from work and walked into my room. She said, Hey, I'm going to my boyfriend's place to spend the night, if that's fine. I said sure, and she started to leave, closing the door behind her. Then, at around 12.55 a.m., I woke up to a noise in my room. I looked to my left, but couldn't see who it was in the dark. I thought it might be my sister using her phone light. Feeling embarrassed, because I was only wearing a t-shirt and night pajamas since it was hot, I freaked out and shouted, What are you doing? As soon as I asked her that, she ran out of my room so quickly that I saw her darting towards the stairs. And then I realized it wasn't my sister who was running down the stairs. Then, when I looked more closely with the hallway light on, I saw that it was a man. A grown man was running down the stairs in my house. I couldn't believe it. I got up quickly to follow him, even though it wasn't a smart thing to do. I just wanted to catch whoever had been in my room. I was so angry that someone had dared to enter my home without permission, so I ran after him. I followed the loud footsteps as they ran downstairs and reached the front door. I saw the man leaving through the back gate into the alley where my dogs had barked earlier. While I called the cops, I knocked on my mom's back door, and my brother answered. I told him what happened, and while we waited for the police, he went outside with a bat in case the man came back. I stayed inside the house with his girlfriend, crying. When the police came in, they searched the entire house thoroughly, but found that nothing had been stolen. Then we found out that the man had broken in through a downstairs window that wasn't locked, even though it was closed and didn't have a screen. I should mention that this window is on the side of the house that leads to the back gate into the alleyway I talked about earlier. I can't help but think that since he didn't take anything, he wasn't there to steal or rob. His intentions were probably much more frightening, and it scares me to think about what could have happened if I hadn't woken up that night. Now I have a terrible feeling that it might have been the same person the dogs were barking at earlier who I couldn't find when I went to check. I live in a small village with 10, 15 houses. It's very rural, but the highway is just a five minute drive away and the town is about 10 minutes away. If you cross the street, you can walk to the forest in about 10 minutes. On the first day of Christmas, in the afternoon, my partner and I decided to go for a walk because we were very full from all the food. It was about 5 p.m. and already dark when we left so we took a big, bright LED flashlight with us. I also took my camera and flash, as I love taking pictures of nature at night. We decided to walk on a small country road toward the forest, and then turn right onto a gravel cycle path near the edge of the forest. In the middle of the path, you walk through a small part of the forest. It was very dark, and the trees were tall and close together. When we walked in, I saw our flashlight reflect on something and realized there was a car parked by the side of the path near the trees. This seemed strange to me as cars are not allowed there, so I felt a bit cautious. My partner shined the light inside the car and it looked empty. 
I also saw that the windows were frozen, so the car must have been parked there for a while. A bit in front of the car, I saw a tree with an interesting shape. I asked my partner to shine the flashlight on it, so I could focus better and take a picture with my flash. After I took a few pictures, my partner said, There's someone standing behind us in the middle of the road, and they're looking at us. No one had followed us the whole way. I had been looking around and behind us from time to time because, at this time of evening and near the edge of the forest, there can be wild boars. There was indeed a man standing behind us, staying out of the light from our flashlight. He wasn't saying anything, just standing there and looking at us. At first, I thought he might be surprised, because it could seem odd to see someone taking photos near your car, especially since it's not even allowed to drive on that path. I decided to stand up and talk to him from a distance, telling him I was just taking pictures of the tree. He didn't respond and just kept standing there. I then asked him if he needed some light, and he said no. It was strange, but I stayed calm, thinking there must be a normal reason for his behavior. Still, my partner and I decided to leave quickly and followed the path to the next village, which took about five to seven minutes to reach. I remembered the letters on his license plate, but not the numbers, and looked it up online. It turned out he was from a city about six hours away from our village. Keep in mind that the country I live in is under a strict lockdown right now, so you're only allowed to travel by car if it's for very urgent reasons. After we reached the first streetlight in the next village, we looked back and saw the car coming out of the forest, turning around and going back in. I saw that he parked again and turned off the lights. We then took a much longer route home because I didn't want to go back there for obvious reasons. Our flashlight battery died, and my phone battery was low, so I didn't want to call the police right then. But as soon as I got home, I called them, and gave them all the details. I really regret not memorizing the whole license plate, but it was such a surprise that I didn't think about it at the time. It only seemed really strange to me when I thought about the frozen windows, and how he couldn't have walked behind us without being noticed. Plus, he had no light, and didn't respond. It seemed like he was sneaking up on us when I was sitting down to take the photo. I think I was very lucky to have my partner, the camera, and the bright light with me. I don't want to imagine what could have happened if I had been alone. <laughs>